chapter 9, text 13. Devaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya 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 Mahatmanas to Mang Paratha Diving Prakritima Shritaha Bhajantyananya Manaso it's going to be line by line translation, I think. Huh? Yes, sentence by sentence. Mahatma nas tu maung paritha daiva im prakriti maashita ha bhajantyanan yamanaso gyadva bhuta dim avyayam om agyana timirandhasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshuram Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guravinvaha. This verse is a reference to Srimati Radharani. Here it is said that those who are great souls, they are great devotees, they are under the protection of Krishna's divine or internal potency. Everyone is under control. Due to illusion, we are thinking. We are not under control. It is a very big illusion because everyone is under control in so many different ways. For instance, everyone is under the control of time. No one likes to get old, no one likes to die, but everyone is forced to grow old and die. So everyone in this material world is under the control of Krishna's external energy. But those who are pure devotees, they are under the control of Krishna's internal energy. The external energy is personified as Mother Durga. And the internal potency is Srimati Radharani. Now this may be very difficult for ordinary people to understand. When we discuss about Krishna and Radharani, they consider it to be something like mundane sexual attraction. Mundane sexual attraction is a perverted reflection of the original attraction between Krishna and Radha, Radha and Krishna. Because we are under the external energy, the deluding potency of Krishna, then we take these bodies to be the all in all. And according to the kind of body we get, we are conditioned to act and think in a certain way. Therefore, we are called conditioned soul. That's one of the reasons why we are called conditioned soul. Now, what does that mean? That means if someone is born, for instance, in the body of a female in the human species, then they think, I have to dress up and put on some makeup and perfume and attract men. The nature of a woman is to seek shelter of a man. And those who are born in the male form, human species, they reciprocate accordingly. According to the mentality which they acquire under the modes of material nature, they act in such a way that will be attractive to the female. By showing themselves to be strong physically, mentally, financially, and in this way able to protect the woman. But factually, both so-called man and so-called women, they're all in a big illusion. Both are looking for security in a relationship with the opposite sex. They're looking for security, happiness, but it's a big illusion. There's no security in the material world. There's no happiness in the material world. A woman thinks, I will marry this man and he will look after me. But he cannot protect you from death. I had a very interesting experience once. I was flying... Uh, between Bangladesh and Thailand, I think it was. So Bangladesh Biman Airlines. So it was the rainy season, which is this season which is going on now, with a lot of rain and storms. So I was sitting next to a man and a woman who happened to be from the same town I was from in England, and they were on holiday, because foolish people think that it's, it's a very wonderful thing to go around the world and take photographs of people eating, sleeping, mating, and defending in other countries. So anyway, we were flying along through the sky, and they were talking happily and peacefully, enjoying their holiday. Then a voice came from the captain, please fasten your seatbelts, and the next second we hit a storm. 
and the plane went vroom like this down and it climbed up again and again went vroom down like this. so everyone became very nervous as they usually do on these occasions became very nervous as they do on these occasions and the young lady the the wife of the husband she grabbed his arm and he stroked her hand as if to say don't worry i'm here to look after you That's so it wouldn't help her very much that he's stroking her hand if the plane falls out of the sky and it smashes on the ground she may get a little comfort from him stroking her hand but he cannot protect her if the plane is going to crash but out of foolishness she was thinking he is helping me he is protecting me and out of even more foolishness he was taking that role this is called gross illusion pashyan api na pashyati even though you can see you don't see even though it was quite obvious that he could not protect her still they were going through the drama that he's protecting me yes i'm protecting her so this illusion of male female relationships in this material world this covers our understanding of the real male female relationship the real male female relationship is that krishna is the supreme personality of godhead he is the only enjoyer and all other living beings are to be enjoyed by him nowadays the women's liberation movement is very prominent women against men but what they don't realize is the real liberation is to understand that we are all women in relationship with krishna we are all predominated we are all subservient to krishna so that is reflected in this material world pervertedly both man and woman is trying to be purush or enjoyer and the result is punar api jananam punar api maranam punar api janani jathare shayanam again and again we get born and we die and we enter the womb of a mother so as long as we are in this illusory consciousness of identifying with these bodies it is impossible to understand the loving affairs of radha and krishna and even when we begin krishna consciousness it takes a long time before we can properly understand what is this juga la priti just like in the bhagavatam it said that even in ordinary social dealings as long as one is not completely liberated from the bodily concept of life he should be extremely careful in his dealings with the opposite sex madras vasra duhitra va navavikthasano bhavet dalavan indriya gramo vidang sang sapikarshati this verse is from shrimad bhagavatam and also from manu samhita and it gives a very stern advice how one should behave that a man should not remain alone in the same room or should not sit close to uh, any woman even if that woman is his mother or his sister or his daughter only of course with his wife is it allowed so not even with mother or sister or daughter why we may say because balavan indriya gramo the senses are very powerful and even this is bhagavata this is not the uh, daily newspaper this is not the opinion of some foolish psychologist this is authoritative so bhagavatam says that yes even one may be attracted if he's sitting even with mother sister or daughter so we may say well that may refer to some mentally disturbed person or some very low class person bhagavatam says vidvang shang sapikarshati even if one is a very learned scholar his mind may be distracted and there are practical examples especially the example of vishwamitra muni is very well known that after executing austerities for 60000 years with great determination that we cannot imagine austerity 60000 years we just had a little austerity this morning fasting until midday once a year we fast all day on janmashtami some devotees fast on ekadashi but most they take ekadashi nahi bak and half day fasting we're thinking oh let's let's have a look at the clock what time is it even when we first join this movement we are rising at 4 o'clock and we don't take prasad until 9 o'clock no one can dream of that we we get up in the morning 4 o'clock and we take prasad at 9 o'clock so most people can't think that 5 hours after getting up in the morning you have something to eat so this is about the limit of our austerity vishwamitra muni was meditating with severe austerities for 
60,000 years. We can't even imagine what it means to live that long. Therefore, sometimes we say, oh, it's only fairy stories. It's not fairy stories. Just because you don't live that long doesn't mean that somebody else cannot live that long. The ant is living for a few, maybe six days. If we tell the ant that the human beings are living for 60 years, he won't believe it. He doesn't even know what a year is. So Vishwamitra so nicely meditating then, tinkle, 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 the sound of Menaka's ankle bells and all his meditation was finished. So then again we may think, well, if Vishwamitra was such a great yogi and he fell down, then what chance for me? I'm not a great yogi. But then again we have the example of Haridash Thakur, who was uh, a young man when he was tempted by a prostitute. Maybe you know the story that Haridash Thakur was a great saint And sometimes people, they become very envious of saintly people. So in the place where Haridash Thakur was living, he was living in a cave uh, near to Benapur in Bengal. If you go, you can still see that place. So the local land, the big man of the area, local landlord, uh, Ramachandra Khan, he became very envious of Haridash Thakur. So he called one prostitute, said, you want to make a lot of money quick? Go and make this Haridas fall down. Go and, go and get Haridas and engage him in your activities. So the prostitute said, all right, uh, let me do once and then another time you bring all the men and we'll catch him that way. So she came at the night time, beginning of the night, and there was Haridas in his cave chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna Hari Hari. Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Ram Ram, Hari Hari. Over and over again. Hari Das was absorbed in the transcendental sound vibration of the holy name. So the prostitute, she had to make some kind of noise or something to attract his attention. So Hari Das saw and uh, he said, well, what do you want? Although he could immediately guess what she wanted. Because why would... Uh, well-dressed young woman come at night to a single man, unasked for. So he immediately understood that uh, something funny going on here. So she said, My dear Haridas, I'm very much attracted. You're so young, you're so beautiful. Please accept me and fulfill my desires. So Haridas could understand that this is a prostitute because no one comes like that. So he said, All right, I'll fulfill your desire. But only one thing is, that I have made a vow to chant the holy names of Krishna one crore times every month. So one crore means ten million times. So to chant one crore of names, what do you have to do? Just like we chant sixteen rounds. So if you chant sixteen rounds uh, twelve times in a day, that gives you approximately three hundred, yeah, that gives you more than three hundred thousand names. So if you do that for 30 days and then you chant one more time, that becomes 10 million times the holy name. Is anyone ready for Japa period? Uh, excuse me? Anyone ready for the Japa period? Japa period lasts one month. So Haida said that I'll fulfill your desire, but I have my prescribed chanting to do. So at the end of the night, when I finish my quota for the day, then we'll see. Then I'll see you. Sure. So Haida said, you just sit out here. This Tulsi is here. You can take Darshan of Tulsi, very auspicious. You wait. You, I'll fulfill your desire. So Haridas was going on chanting, chanting, chanting. And the prostitute was sitting outside and she was also sometime hearing. She was also saying, oh, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna then the morning Krishna. came, the sun rose and uh, Haridas just finished his chanting for that period of time. He came outside and the prostitute was still there. He said, well, I was a little slow chanting my japa today. Never mind, you come back tomorrow. So again, the same thing finished. It happened next night. All night Haridas was chanting and all night the prostitute was simply sitting and hearing him chanting. So the next night, the third night, towards the end of the night, Haridas was chanting and chanting. He was chanting and chanting. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare One crore name 10 million names finished and still some time was left in the night 
So he came out to the prostitute and said, I'm sorry I kept you waiting. Now I finished my vow to chant Hare Krishna. Now what do you want? And she fell down at his feet and said, Please forgive me, I'm the most sinful wretch. How could I be so sinful? I was sent by Ramachandra Khan to destroy your saintly life. What the most horrible thing I was doing. Hairaj Thakur said, Yes, I understand that that's what you were doing. And I would have left this place immediately when you came. But I thought, seeing as someone came to me, it is my duty to try to help them become Krishna conscious. So now you've heard me chanting for three nights. Now you have also been chanting and offering obeisances to Tulsi. So now your mind is purified. So give up your old bad business. You stay in this cave, chant Hare Krishna and worship Tulsi. And I'm going. So everyone is amazed. Ram Chandra Khan, he wanted to defame Haridas. But instead his glories were magnified. Everyone was amazed that this lowest of the low class harlot had been changed into a great Vaishnavi by the power of Vaidash Thakur. And Ramachandra Khan simply burned with envy. So anyway, this is the difference between an ordinary yogi and a devotee of Krishna. Of course, not every devotee is on the level of Haridash Thakur, that is the most exalted level. But the point to understand is that by chanting Hare Krishna, we get everything. That which the yogis cannot attain, we can attain. Yogis doing difficult austerities in the Himalayas for many, many years, they don't get the same benefit as someone in Rieka chanting Hare Krishna. Just by this chanting, all perfection can be achieved. This Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Prabhu Kahe Kahilam, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told that this Hare Krishna chanting, this is the Maha Mantra. There are so many mantras in the Vedas, but this is the greatest mantra, the Maha Mantra. Hmm, maybe he was thinking Haridas should have gone with the prostitute. He didn't like the end of the story. <laughs> the love story with the... Love story with a bad ending. They have these women's magazines where the, they have these women's magazines, these stories where the man doesn't like the woman and she's crying and waiting for him. But in the end, after so much heartbreaking, his heart melts and he falls into Maya and falls in love with her. But our happy love endings, our happy ending of the love story is he takes sannyas and she takes sannyas also. <laughs> Just like Prabhupada told that story from Srimad Bhagavatam. There's a story in the Bhagavatam 11th canto which shows the uselessness of family attachment. There were two pigeons, Kapota and Kapoti, male and female. They were deeply in love with each other. They loved each other from the core of their foolish hearts. They took great pleasure in looking at each other, flying here and there together, discussing pigeon talk with each other. In this way, they were happy, happy pigeons. Ideal story, happy family. So, after some time, Mrs. Pigeon got pregnant. And she laid some eggs in the nest. And the love for the husband and wife increased a thousand times. And gradually, one by one, the eggs broke open and some ugly-looking little pigeons (laughs) came out. But to Mr. and Mrs. Pigeon, they were the most beautiful creatures in all of creation. And they became very busy flying here and there, finding worms and insects for them to eat. And they saw the little pigeons grow day by day. Gradually little feathers grew on their body. And they could also start to fly a little bit, not much. And Mr. and Mrs. Pigeon thought that life is so wonderful. There are no, more happy, there are no pigeons more happy than us in all the creation. So one day, Mr. and Mrs. Pigeon were both away looking for horrible little things to feed to their children when one hunter came. And seeing the pigeon's nest, he thought that certainly the parent pigeons must be coming soon. So he spread out his net at the base of the tree where their nest was. This kind of net, if, uh, if any creature goes inside it, they, they get stuck, they can't come out. So when Mrs. Pigeon came, she first came to the base of the tree and she got caught in the net. And she thought, oh no, now my life is finished. I won't be able to serve my family anymore. They were so much depending on me. How will they live without me? And hearing her pathetic chirping, the baby pigeons in the nest thought, let's go and help mummy. So they all 
flew down to help mummy. Mummy, don't worry, we're here to help you. And then they were also caught in the net. A hunter still waited. He thought, Mr. Pigeon has yet to come. So Mr. Pigeon came, he flew into the nest. Then he looked down and he saw all his family caught in the net. And he thought, now all my happiness is finished. Everything I live for is shattered. Life is so cruel. We were so happy. I love my wife and she loved me. Our children were very well behaved. Ideal pigeons. Now, what shall I do? So he just simply fainted. He fell in the net also. And the hunter packed them all up and went home to feed them to his family. This is the story in the Bhagavatam. Prabhupada, in a lecture, he told it a little bit differently. That when Mr. Pigeon came back to the nest, he saw, just see, my whole family is now finished. I was in so much illusion being attached to them. So now let me take sannyas. That Prabhupada gave the uh, positive alternative. Material life is miserable, so take sannyas. Prabhupada said one time, I've traveled all over the world. And my conclusion is, take sannyas. Don't rot in this material world. Anyway, the point is that bhakti yoga, chanting Hare Krishna... That is powerful to cross over illusion. And whatever situation one is in, he can cross over material life by chanting Hare Krishna. Even if one is in family life, compared to a deep dark well, Kriyam but he can turn his home into a Grihasta ashram by following the principles of Krishna. And everyone is kept dull. Their intelligence is made dull by sitting and watching. TV. Now, if anyone listens to this, they'll think, oh, this is really brainwashing. How can you talk against the TV? That's the greatest offense. That's blasphemy. The TV is the most important feature of modern society. Where would we be without our TVs? But actually, the TV, that is brainwashing. Just all garbage things are on TV. Really, I mean, they spend so much money and they, they use all their big, big brains to do what? They put big satellites into space so that you can watch a tennis match from 10,000 kilometers away. Two people jumping around, hitting a ball at each other. Or another great advantage of TV, you can watch Mickey Mouse, Tom and Jerry, Donald Duck. So this is a waste of the human form of life. The people who made these things, they are no doubt very intelligent on one level. But they are lacking some basic intelligence about how to use their intelligence. That same intelligence that they used for making space satellites to show you Mickey Mouse, they should use that for understanding God. So the result of watching television is that people become very dull. They cannot think what is the purpose of life and how to attain it. Therefore, my recommendation to anyone, if they want to be serious about spiritual life, if they're living at home, you can sell your TV and make a nice altar and put the pictures of Krishna and worship them. We still have most of the people with us. If I go on like this, there'll be no one left. But those who stay, they will get benefit. If we tell people, we're going to teach you how to be benefited. All you have to do is stop eating meat, fish and eggs, no more gambling, no more illicit sex and no more intoxication. And chant Hare Krishna. Then they may not be very interested. Not very interested at all. So usually we don't tell people so many different things. We ask them, chant Hare Krishna and be happy. But as people go on and on chanting Hare Krishna, they come to realize that where is the happiness anyway in illicit sex, meat-eating, intoxication and gambling? So when, by increasing our taste for chanting Hare Krishna, we give up these things, then other things also. Just like what is the use of watching TV when we can chant Hare Krishna? If anyone can give up watching TV, that's like taking sannyas. That's real renunciation. But actually, what is it? Idiot box. They say that in your language also? Not in English, exactly. they say idiot box. That means that only idiots watch it. And if you're not an idiot, when you start to watch it, it'll make you an idiot. The so, the opposite of idiot box is bead bag. That intelligent people, they turn off the idiot box and put their hand in the bead bag. And even if you're an idiot, when you start to chant, chanting will make you intelligent. Okay. Everyone in this material world is foolish. But chanting Hare Krishna makes us intelligent. By chanting Hare Krishna, we can understand who we are. Who is God? What is our relationship with Him? How to develop that relationship? How to become detached from material sense enjoyment? And chanting on and on, there are different stages of understanding. 
Nam, Goon, Rup, Leela. First of all, one gets a taste for chanting Hare Krishna. By chanting more and more, he comes to appreciate the qualities of Krishna. How wonderful is Krishna? How kind is Krishna? How merciful is Krishna? Then, chanting more and more, he comes to appreciate the divine form of Krishna, Satyadananda Vigraha. When one is uh, appreciating the beautiful form of Krishna, then no more will he be attracted to the forms of this material world. And by chanting more and more, one comes to appreciate the Leela, the divine pastimes of Krishna. So by chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, one can become purified so much that he can understand the, the pastimes of Radha Krishna in Vrindavan. So, Hare Krishna, is there any question? Do you have this Chandan, Gokul Chandra? You have that? Any question? One thing I must say, it's very nice to see so many young people taking interest in Krishna consciousness. At this age, mostly people are thinking how to enjoy the senses. But if at this young age one can understand that sense enjoyment is not the goal of life, the Krishna consciousness is the goal of life, that's very auspicious. So any question? No, no question? All right, well, I have something here. This is uh, Chandan, sandalwood pulp, sandalwood paste from Krishna Balaram in Vrindavan. Maybe you know, on the Chandan Yatra day, the deities are covered with this paste, because it's very hot at that time. Actually, this year was very early. It was May the 2nd. I was just before I left India last. It was only 42, which is quite cool for that time of year, actually, in Brindle. One time I was there during May, June, and every day the thermometer was going 52, 53, 50. That's pretty hot. But 42 in India, that's not unusual. Anyway, it's quite hot. So the deities are covered in this sandalwood paste, their whole body. So I got a bag full of that powder out when the festival was finished. And I've been distributing it on my travels. And I'm coming back to India soon and just I have enough for the next few places.